In this example, we're going to analyze the rear spoiler that you might see on some cars. So this is like a wing shape on the very back of a car. And a lot of times people think that these rear spoilers are used to pr provide a downforce, so a, a basically a downward lift force on the back of the car to provide more downward force on the rear wheels. And then that helps the car corner better. So you're, you're being, the, the back of the car is being pressed down into the ground more. And so you get a larger frictional force to help resist uh, the car from skidding when it's making a sharp turn. So we're going to analyze what that down force might be for a typical kind of wing on, a, on the back of a typical kind of car. Okay, there's not a lot of information given in this problem statement, so we're going to uh, make up some of that information for ourselves here. So if we're going to find the downward force, this kind of downward lift force, uh, this is a lift calculation, so we're going to take a lift coefficient times a dynamic pressure times a, uh, in this case, since it's an airfoil shape, it'll be a planform area. That's the area you would see on a wing if you look down from above. So let's put in some typical numbers here. So let's start first with the planform area of the wing. I'm going to say that that's about, um, that, that the, let me, let me redraw the wing here. So this is looking down from above. I'm going to say that it has a span of about four feet. So that's just four feet from side to side. That's kind of the typical width of a, um, of a wing that might be on the back of a car there. Maybe it's a little bit short, but that's the number I'm going to use. And then I'm going to say that the cord length of the wing is about a half a foot. So that's four feet this way, and then about a half a foot this way. Sorry, it doesn't show up that well in the picture, but hopefully you get the idea. So that's the area that we'll use. So that comes out to be two square feet, or in metric units, about 0.186 square meters. Okay, the density of the surrounding air is just 1.23 kilograms per cubic meter. That's uh, it's just standard uh, temperature and pressure. Let's say the velocity is 55 miles per hour, so that's 24.6 meters per second. So 55 miles per hour. This is a, a law-abiding citizen who's driving their car at the speed stated speed limit. Now the next term is the lift coefficient, and this one all depends on the airfoil and the angle of attack and things like that, right? So uh, to find a good estimate for that, what I did is I, I turned to your textbook. This is coming from your um, the the Fox and McDonald textbook. I think it's figure 917 out of that textbook. Depends on which version you have. But at least in the eighth edition, it was figure 917. And it shows some lift coefficients versus angle of attack for a couple of different airfoil shapes. So these are particular NACA airfoils. They're just different uh, airfoil shapes. So I'm using those as just characteristic airfoils. Now, now the lift coefficient will depend completely on what kind of airfoil shape you have. Since we're not given that information, I'm just using characteristic values based on these airfoils. So if I look at this at a, an angle of attack, let's say maybe around 12 to 16 degrees here, it's about a 1.4. You can sort of see it over here as well, around 12 to 14 degrees. So I'm going to use a lift coefficient of 1.4 as just a, a typical number. Okay, so somewhere right about in there. Again, the lift coefficient is going to depend on how that, that rear airfoil is mounted, you know, what kind of angle of attack it has, what its particular shape is. But since we're not given any of that information, I'm just using a, a characteristic or typical value. So, okay, if we have all these values, we can plug them into our relation up here and calculate the lift. And if you do that, you'll find that the lift comes out to be about 96.9 newtons. Let me rewrite that, 9 which is about 21.8 pounds force, 22 pounds force. So it's not, a, it's not a huge force, right? It's like having a bag of sand or something in the trunk of your car gives you an equivalent downforce. Sure, it certainly helps with the downforce, but it's not, it's not a hugely significant number, at least not at 55 miles per hour. If you wanted a larger force, you could, one way to do that with the same airfoil is just increase the speed of your car. So if you wanted to get a downforce of, let's say, 200 pounds force, 
So to get a, a downforce of 200 pounds force, which is about 890 newtons, then what you'd find is that the speed you'd have to travel is 70.7 .7 meters per second or 158 miles per hour. Obviously, that is not legal. Uh, but if you're on a racetrack or something, you know, and you had a, a powerful enough um, vehicle, you know, maybe that's possible. That That is actually a pretty significant downforce there, 200 pounds. Um, but you have to go to pretty high speed to get there. So these kind of rear airfoils on the back of a car help a small amount. You know, they, they do provide a small amount of downforce that might help with cornering. Uh, I'm not a car racer, so I don't know if, you know, 22 pounds of extra force is really enough to make much of a difference. I I would think that it probably doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, that You'd likely have to go to much higher speeds. Notice that the lift force goes as the velocity squared, so every time you double the speed, that lift force will go up by a factor of four. Um, so... So anyway, I don't I don't know whether 22 pounds is really makes a big difference. One thing I will say though is that in a lot of vehicles, these rear spoilers aren't really meant to provide downforce, but they actually help reduce the drag on the vehicle because what happens is they help um, the, with the airflow airflow over the back of the vehicle and helps the uh, batter layer stay attached a little bit longer, and helps. Um, just and that can help reduce the drag on the vehicle. Can also help clear the back uh, windshield here. Can help keep debris and such from collecting on the surface. So sometimes you'll see these back here just to help guide the flow over the back part of the car. Um, I said over the back of the windshield. Actually, what I mean is behind the trunk a little bit. Can help direct the flow downward so it doesn't the flow doesn't become detached and create a big wake behind the the trunk. So anyway, that's that's one big reason people have that. The other reason is just for aesthetics. It looks good. All right, anyway, that, that's our analysis. We'll go ahead and end the example there.